Today I'm going to be doing a glass repair on an Apple Watch. This is the 38mm Series 1. Um, I've got this video sped up quite a bit, so this is not how... I think this is times 4 speed, so this is not how uh, uh, fast it should be to, to take off the, the glass. Um, it'll take a little bit more effort uh, to do that. Um, I'm using a, a very thin wire. I think it's 0 .04 millimeters to do it. Um, I'm going to clean off the adhesive. Now this adhesive is pretty tough and uh, it took me a, a couple minutes uh, to realize that um, um, I could take a, a, a razor blade to this uh, to this screen in particular because there is a glass digitizer um, whereas uh, like say on the uh, second gen or third gen you, you, won't, you won't want to take a razor blade to the display um, because the digitizer is actually integrated into the the, the glass itself or on the uh, first uh, first gen um, or the first series one it the glass is a separate piece from the digitizer which is a separate piece from the LCD anyway so I'm just cleaning it I've got um, some acetone and some um, LCD adhesive remover that I, that I like to use um, pretty uh, gritty stuff um, but you'll see here in a little bit um, when I come back the uh, being able to switch over to the the razor blade sped things up quite a bit see how much effort it took just to get down to the to the uh, to the digitizer quite a bit using my fingernail I, I started scraping away at it and once I was down to the base level it was much easier to get all the way under and just scrape through it um, but as you can tell it's uh, still pretty tough to uh, to do um, so I wish that I had used the, the razor blade at this point because um, it was taking quite a bit of time uh, to do this. Um, typically I've, I've separated the, uh, the digitizer from the, uh, the display because it's easier um, but uh, um, I didn't have a, uh, a good digitizer um, on hand. I just had the glass piece on hand, so I wanted to get this one done for the customer. I think uh, coming up here is when I realized, yeah, let, let me just go ahead and use the razor blade for the rest of this. Another thing that I was being cautious of um, is uh, the flex cable or the gold flex cable at the bottom. Um, I couldn't remember if it was on the, uh, the top side or the bottom side of the glass. Um, uh, and I realized uh, that, that after a while that, that I could just go right over the top of that with the blade and not worry about cutting the... Um, the flex cable because it is, it is a, uh, um, it's under the it's under the glass. The glass comes all the way out past it on the edge, so you can take a blade and you can carefully run it uh, around each head, edge. Um, so as long as you're gentle and you're using a fresh blade, don't use anything that's got dings or dents in it. Um, just take your time. Um, much quicker this way than than trying to. Um, to get at it with, uh, with my fingernail or just the, uh, the adhesive remover.
Now in this video I won't be showing how to adhere the uh, uh, the glass to the display. I have a, another video that shows a couple methods that you can use um, to adhere the, uh, the glass to the to the display. Um, in fact, I show how to adhere the uh, glass to the digitizer and to adhere the digitizer to the display. Um, all three three parts instead of just showing you this this one which would be a two part if I had done it um, if I had done the glass on it in this video um, it's pretty straightforward if you've ever done a, a glass repair on anything really the, 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 the best way I found is to use the the loca glue um, you just need a, a small little a small little drop um, uh, in the center, and you set the glass on it. And you let the uh, you let gravity basically do the work. Uh, hit it with the UV light, and make sure it's centered when you do that. Um, it's kind of hard to center these ones. So you have to really get you're getting close. Um, eyeball it if you have a, a microscope. Use that, or just simply uh, um, what I like to do is flash the light on and off, on and off, just to give it temporary small bursts of, of UV light so that it slowly gets a little harder and harder and harder so that I have a little bit of play in the uh, the movement of the display so that I can adjust it and tweak it until I, I believe that it's as centered as I'm possibly going to get it um, to make it look uh, as close to factory as possible. Um, so I've almost got all the adhesive off of the display here. Um, basically um, uh, all you really need to do is, is get it to that point um, and of course before you you go ahead and, and adhere a new glass to it you might as well test and make sure you didn't damage the, uh, the digitizer, the touch portion or the display um, itself um, because working with a display that's as thin as this one is and a touch screen that is fragile as this one is uh, things can go wrong and so you want to make sure that um, you've done your job right. Um, so here we're gonna, in a little bit, we're gonna test it um, carefully. Um, connect the two connectors for the uh, the, the touchscreen and the uh, the display. Um, I think this one was dead, so I had to charge it up. Um, let's see. Yeah. But. here in a second we'll probably see it come on and then I'll be able to show you that the touch screen is completely functional on it Sometimes they take a long time to boot up. There we go. So, what we'll do is we will, uh, what I'll probably do is just go and test like a, the, the, where the passcode is um, and see if it, if it works. So it looks like both the top and bottom working, middle, Looks like it's good. And then we'll go ahead and probably just shut it off. You can 
and see swiping works if I hold it down it should follow my finger all the way across there we go